we may always have food, but food as we know it may be changing. There are five concerns that I think we need to pay attention to with the war on food, the war on farmland, and really what is gonna to happen to the farmer. So let's jump into some concerning trends, some things we need to be watching out for because they are gonna be uh, playing out pretty heavy in the next few years, and that will jeopardize the food system. Guys, let's jump into the video today. It's gonna to be a good one. It starts right now. As farmers, we take care of ourselves, so we call ourselves homesteaders. But for the majority of Americans, they depend on the farmer for the food. Now we see our government maybe pushing away from that and we're starting to see petri dish meats and we're starting to see more indoor grow houses and I'm not against any of that. But when we take the natural part of growing food, the natural meats, the natural veggies out of food, and now we're seeing food maybe grown innovative, but a little unnatural. So uh, you decide what's best for you and your family, but let's talk about the crisis and the concerns that we should have on the American farm and the American farmland. So number one, the American farmer, average age of the American farmer is 57 and a half years old. Now that's a statistic that was pulled from the last two years. Now it may have went up from there because those same farmers do age every year. We're hoping to see more people move into farming, but there's some more concerns in this video that we'll address later on that uh, kind of hurts that trend to keep on going. So let's think about that. The average farmer at 58 years old, I know around here there's been three farms, two dairy and one uh, I would consider conventional farm that is closed down. If we see more trends that way, just in my area, I know I'm only 36 years old, and I say only because I, I want to feel young still. I've seen about 10 dairy farms in my area go away. Now we have seen a surplus of chicken farms come up. The scary thing is, is they're so um, co-opted and so covered by the chicken industry that I don't think they have any freedom in that industry. So uh, I digress there. But we're still seeing the average age of the farmer keep climbing. What that means is there's no one moving into the farm. There's no one growing up saying, I wanna be a farmer. Now my kids or, or other kids that are under homesteaders and farmers that do sustainable agriculture, we're, we may be seeing that. But that is a very small, minute amount of children. For the average American, they see no value in moving to a farm and starting a farm. That could be scary because that will affect the food industry. Now, if all our food comes off farm because most people don't grow their own farm and the average farmer is getting older and retiring, what's to say that won't affect our food? You may not have shortages. Like I said, we may be growing food in uh, warehouses now. But the problem is, will that make your prices go up? Will that make shortages? The average age of the farmer is a big deal. Number two is when the farmer goes out of business or the farmer wants to quit or the farmer wants to retire or can't make it, what happens to the farm? Who's buying the land? Special interests or billionaires or, or big business is buying the land. Now, of 2017, I think the study was like 96% of all farms were still owned by the local family farm. Sadly, we're starting to see a maneuvering and a trend to go away from that. You hear it all the time, but Bill Gates is definitely the biggest farm land owner. I don't think he did that to make uh, tons of wealth in the farming industry. I think it's the fact that now he can own the land. And I think we're starting to see more special interests, more big business, and more oligarchs kind of do that and maneuver towards uh, if we own the land, then we own what goes on the land. As of a year ago, Bill Gates owned a little less than 300,000 acres worth of farmland. And I know this has been a practice for bigger uh, billionaires and bigger companies to buy the land and then turn around and let the farmers not have the stress of owning the land. They can still work the land and contract it out and, and still grow food. But the dangers of that, you, know, you ever hear about, you know, if you rent or lease, it may be good for a time, but all in all, you don't own it. So you don't control it. And that's the sad thing. If we see a maneuvering of big business buying land, I'm not saying I'm against uh, you know, people buying land or businesses expanding into farmland. I know farmland is looked upon as a hedge against inflation, just kind of like precious metals. 
but what is the what's the plan behind it what's the special interest behind it well we know in, in mr gates situation is that uh I don't think he's pushing for more cows and more farms to grow organically or natural or to see a thriving economy on farming. I think his push is to get away from meats and to get away from certain style farms. And therefore, if he owns it all, even though he may be a philanthropist now and he may help farms get started or have big operations on farms still going today, is there a special interest behind it? Is there gonna be more to it? Uh, for instance, I think of the, the beef industry. If the beef industry is owned by four big players, that means the more land they buy, the more they monopolize the market, which that means they control what goes on with the beef industry. There's not enough little guys to outweigh one or two or three or four big guys. So the special interest in the fact that big businesses or billionaires are buying land, it's not the fact that they can't, it's the fact of there should be some reasons behind it and the scary thing is a lot of them are telling you right out front what their plans are for their agendas and their agendas doesn't say we're going to take care of growing more food for people it tends to be a little bit different than that and uh, i challenge you to look into it they will affect what actually happens on that land not the people that's renting or leasing it it's the ones who own it number three the price of land. This is a crisis that I think that we don't, we don't see as a crisis uh, because we all own our value of our land to go up. It will affect the next number that we're gonna be talking about. So the price of land. Now this is a big deal because as we were talking with the aging farmer, if the aging farmer, all he has in assets is really the equipment that uh, he works the land with, which is mostly worn out, and the land itself, what does he retire on? How does he retire? Farms usually bring in tons of cash flow, but they have tons of outflow. It's a lot of import in the cash, but it's a lot of export in the cash. So their value is they make a good income. However, their retirement is their land, is their farm. So if a farmer wants to retire, what happens? He either lives off the land and he has children that comes in and runs it and they can supplement each other off of it, or he has to sell it. Now. If I was selling land, and just like anybody else, they want the best value for their land that they can get. If all of a sudden the land prices have went up, for instance, I'm gonna read you some statistics. I'm gonna read you a state in Wisconsin, the price of land has went up 8.8% 8 .8 over 2021. Here's the scary thing though. Over 21 to 2020, it went up 21%. So since 2020, uh, farmland has went up around 29 to 30%. Now that sounds like a good thing, especially for a farmer that's selling land, and especially for the people who like, uh, you know, kids who don't want to go into farming. It's his retirement, it's probably better that way. He worked hard for it. Yes, but who can afford the land? And it goes back to number one and two. If our kids are not going to farm, the average person who's 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, wants to get into farming, probably can't afford the land because it's went up 30%. Who can buy the land? Big business billionaires other big farms that are tied to uh, maybe agendas special interest I know this is a catch-22 we want to see the farmer have a retirement they've worked hard for it they fed America however if the land prices keep going up and farmlands keep getting more expensive and more expensive it may benefit the farmer at that time but actually it may make America suffer more because is that land turned into subdivisions? Is that land turned into big ag that allows them to do whatever they want and not uh, maybe grow food, maybe has an agenda behind it? Do you see more timber being planted to get away from farmlands? Do you see instead of crops, we're putting cover crops in, which I believe cover crops are a great thing. But if we're needing food, it may not be for that season. But if there's an agenda behind it, and we see the farmer selling to those big businesses because they're the only ones that, that can afford it. And I know in North Mississippi, they deal with it in the Delta. Those big farms, people are not moving to the Delta. People are not moving to be farmers. And if they are, they can't afford the big spreads. So who ends up owning the land? So the price of land, it does scare me a little bit. I want to see your values go up. I want to see our land value go up. But there has to be a point of moderation to say, you know, if one day I won't own this, somebody else will. I want to build this homestead and this farm for my children or for someone. But if all of a sudden a big business comes in or a big billionaire comes in, 
I doubt they're gonna worry about what their pigs are doing or if their sheep were okay last night. So something to think about. Price of farmland, we don't need it to go too crazy high because it will affect how our food is grown. Number four goes along with that and it's the taxes on the land. State taxes, uh, family taxes. If you're not passing, it's funny, because if you're not passing your land off and giving gifts all the way throughout, now I'm not giving you tax advice, I'm just saying if a farmer is not actually giving his land away or has gotten good tax advice from a good tax CPA or lawyer, by the time he's 55 to 60, 65 years old and he's wanting to retire, he can't give it away. Well, guess what happens? If all of a sudden this farmer passes, the exemption levels on the state tax keeps dropping, what's gonna happen? That land is gonna be so expensive because that is the only asset that farmer had. So all of a sudden, his land value, which he may have not had a lot of cash, a lot of liquid money, but his land value may bring millions of dollars. Well, the problem is his generations, his kids who wanted the farm can't afford the farm anymore because they have to pay a monstrous amount of a tax to the government on that land now i told you a long ago i'm fully against property tax i think it's the biggest crock if i buy the land the government should not have a, a say in charging me any kind of extra property tax the other tax that stresses me out is things like estate tax You've worked so hard to provide for your family. You've worked so hard to retire. And then all of a sudden when you pass, instead of you being able to pass down your farm, the government hits you with a monster tax that ends up making you sell a portion of the farm to pay the tax. That's crazy. So you don't see the world food between taxes and the prices of things going up and the fact that the average farmer is too old and they can't sell their lands to younger people because the younger people can't afford it maybe because of inflation or, or interest or the cost of the farmland all of that plays into your food if every one of these things happen guess what the price of your food goes up or either the, the food that you know now the common beef the common chicken the common the common greens that you eat will be different in the next few years these things impact us more than we realize and taxes on farmland and taxes on the states it's a crock if you don't see that that's bad someone shouldn't have to buy something and then automatically start giving it away to turn around and not have a tax implication at the same time do we pay taxes yes i believe every every american would say they pay enough tax i agree and if we did better with our taxes and the government spent it more wisely we may be willing to give more <laughs> but we frivolously spend which makes me very ill because i see people work so hard and then all of a sudden the government taxes them so much they have to sell half their farmland to pay for it it's not right last point i want to make about the war on food is the fact not only are the billionaires buying the land not only is big business buying the land not only is special interests matter it actually matters because foreign agents are buying our land not a lot of countries allow foreign entities or foreign governments to buy in their land. Why does America? Let's go over the numbers. It's kind of overwhelming. And the sad thing is, it's not just people who like us. It's the people who don't like us. China owns 194,000 acres. Venezuela, who hates us even more, owns 28,000 acres. Saudi Arabia, 18,000 acres. Compared to U.S. farmland owned by investors who liked us, Germany 1.2 billion acres, France 643,000 acres, Switzerland 313,000 acres. China owns nearly 29.3 billion dollars worth of U.S. land, farmland and other U.S. land assets that they have. So why? Why do they own American land? Why do we allow them to own our lands? We've worked so hard to have a free country to then turn around and allow people to turn around and buy our land <laughs> from other countries that do not have our same values it makes no sense so the local farm right now is still strong and actually the price of goods are up which helps the farmer but you see these trends and the more and more years that go that tax that the land prices that the average farmer ages out and that we allow a foreign governments and sometimes foreign adversaries to buy our land for special interest to buy our land or even investors no one wants to live on a farm anymore so they're making big subdivisions out of that I'm not saying that's a problem I know people have to find places to live but the more we take our farmland up 
the more we don't have food, the more we have to import food. And then we become more dependent on everybody else. Governments, globalists, and people who are not independent thinkers and freedom-minded farming loving people. We need local farmers. We need farms to stay strong in America that we can provide for our people. Guys, thank you so much. Give me your thoughts on this video. If you're new to the Max Gardner here, press subscribe, ring the bell. Again, uh, we have a monster giveaway coming up uh, at 200,000. I think we're right here at 175,000 subscribers. When we get to 200,000, we're going to do a massive giveaway of thousands of dollars worth of prizes. All you have to do is just subscribe, ring the bell, and that way you'll be entered into the giveaway. Thank you so much for watching. God bless. Happy homesteading, y'all.